So for this video uh, series, I'm going to show you, teach about uh, Euler buckling, modes of buckling, inelastic buckling, non, non ideal common behavior and eccentricity, and designing equations for columns. I'm going to break this up into a few videos. That way it's a little bit easier to digest. Um, and so it's not just a 45 to an hour long video and you can watch it, take some notes, watch it, take some more notes, watch another video, take some more notes, so on and so forth. All right. So, so you'll have one problem from this on your exam, your take home exam. So just go through it slowly. Try to absorb it as much as you can. If you have any questions, feel, feel free to contact me during class on Thursday or, um, or over email. All right. All right. So there are some videos uh, that I thought were interesting. Uh, this is more like a material. This video here was about like material science all about different types of um, uh, buckling uh, of columns with different end conditions and different lengths and stuff. Um, there was a couple of videos on like uh, finite element analysis, uh, buckling for ca cars during like car crashes and stuff. And you can see the buckling deformation in plates. And then the last video is a buckling calculator that you can use to calculate like Euler buckling and some other types of buckling. So it's very simple to use. Um, it's already stored online. Okay. All right. All right. So <clears throat> the first topic we're going to talk about today is called Euler buckling. All right. So Euler buckling is when you have a column. Like uh, the example I'm going to show you is when you have a column that's fixed at one end. Okay. And then you have an applied load of P. All right, you have a deflection uh, delta, which is the deflection at the free end here. Um, and then we also have VC of X, which is the deflection displacement. Of centroid along uh, the x axis. All right. So <clears throat> for this problem, because it is a cantilever beam, um, the boundary conditions are the same as they would be for a transverse load. So if it were VC of zero would be equal to zero. Um, so there's no displacement at length x is equal to zero, and then vc prime of zero. So the slope at point zero is also equal to zero. All right. So um, we can set the moment about the z-axis is going to be equal to p times delta um, minus the displacement along the x-axis. Okay. So if we write, we also know that the moment of the uh, the moment of the uh, along uh, the function of x is also equal to the second derivative of the what should we call it of the uh, displacement of the beam times dx squared. I mean, with respect, is the second derivative of vx dc x times e to the i z. So if we just rearrange that equation, we can plug that in here. All right. And then if we rearrange this equation, what we'll end up getting is there should be a vc of x term here as well. Um, but what we end up getting is a second order linear non-homogeneous differential equation. Um, and the solution to this equation is this equation here, all right? So we have C1 and C2 are constants of integration, and K we can define with is equal to load P over square root, the square root of P over E to the IZ, all right? So we're going to try to figure out what are C2, C1 and C2. So in order to do that, we're going to use the boundary conditions. All right, so we're going to take our boundary conditions here. Oh, sorry about that. All 
right? So we're going to use our boundary conditions here. And we're going to apply them here. So you see a zero, that's a zero, and that's going to go to C1 plus zero plus C2 plus delta. And then the derivative, the x is right to zero, again, is equal to zero, and that would be C1, K, cosine of zero. Uh, minus c2 k sine of zero plus zero. So what we end up getting is that c1 is equal to zero and c2 is equal to minus delta.